Okay, everybody. So this will probably be this. Okay, so I'm gonna start a video series on series. Okay, you will probably have three or four videos, maybe more than that. It's a pretty big topic within calculus two. I think for the most part, the math is not that difficult, but you'll have to learn some new concepts. Uh, and some of it is counterintuitive, meaning once we get further into it, the way things work are different than you might expect. All right, so you're gonna have to train your thinking to notice certain things. And you're definitely gonna have to learn some vocabulary and some new concepts, all right? So series, I could define a series. Like I could write down a definition like out of a math book, but that's not what I'm gonna do. For now, I'm just gonna show you what a series is. Both of these are series. They're finite series. We'll mainly deal with infinite series, but for now, we'll start What's finite series? What's finite mean? Finite means it's limited, okay? Uh, there are only so many terms in this series, and there are only so many terms in this series. But an infinite series has an infinite number of terms. So first of all, what does this mean? It means uh, into this formula, we will put the numbers from one consecutively counting up to four, and we will add all of our results together. So in other words, Putting one in, I get like so. Putting two in, I get like so. Putting three in, I get like so. And putting four in, I get like so. All right, so into that formula two times I, I let I be one, two, three, four, and I stop at four when I get to four. So anyway, let's see, add all that together, that turns out to be 20, okay? Because it's 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8, and then that's 20. All right, um, what about this one? Does the counting have to start at 1? Yes, you do start at that bottom number down there, and you definitely stop up here. But do you have to start at 1, and where do you end? Well, it's like it could be different every problem, like this one. We'll start at 3, and we'll end at 5, okay? Another thing, the variable involved in a series doesn't have to be i. It could be i or it could be n or sometimes it's k. Uh, it's just like algebra. You can use lots of different letters of the alphabet to represent variables. Okay, So just to, to spice things up a little bit, at least in as far as math goes, I, I used n instead of i. All right. So what are we going to get this time? We're going to put 3 in, 3 squared, that's 9, plus 1, that will be 10. And then I count my way up to 5, so the next number is 4. 4 squared is 16, plus 1 is 17. And then I'm up to 5 at that point. I put 5 in, 5 squared is 25, plus 1 is 26. So there's my series. This amounts to saying 10 plus 17 plus 26, uh, and that is going to be 53. Okay. All right, so you probably get the idea. Uh, when we use this symbol, okay, as the way that I've showed you with those two examples, that is called summation. Now, sum means add, right? Okay, so summation notation. We don't have to write a series with summation notation. I mean, you could write this series as 10 plus 17 plus 26, or you could write it with the sum summation notation like this. It definitely looks more intimidating with the summation notation, but that's all it means. So, well, here's one where I said, well, I'll, maybe I'll just write it out. 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus uh, dot, dot, dot. Hmm. So there must be something to fill in there in the middle. Some stuff must be left out. And then it continues plus 128 plus 256 plus 512. Uh, well, so when we put dots like this, those dot, 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 those are called ellipses. And I told you what ellipses were in our video on sequences, all right? But it just means that there's a continuation there, and then it picks back up. Um, now, okay, so how are you going to think about it? You're going to think, not all the terms are written, but we can identify a pattern. Do you see a pattern among the terms that are there? It looks like every term is double the term that comes before it. That's evident from every term that I have there. 
2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 8 is 16, 2 times 128 gets you this next term, 256, and so on. So I, I, you know, I can tell that what we're missing out of this is plus 32 plus, double that, 64. And then what if we double 64? We get 128. All right. So yeah, sometimes things are written that way with the ellipses to indicate that something has been left out, but there's a pattern that we should be able to identify to figure out what it is, okay? Well, anyway, so 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus 60. Keep going. Add all that together. That's going to be 1,020, all right? And then there's our answer. Now, in the beginning, that's about all you can do with series. You know, it's just series means sum or add. You add stuff together. I'm not saying it doesn't get more complicated than this, but in the beginning, that's what it's like, all right? Okay, so in my first slide here, we get acquainted with the very basics of the concept of a series. Obviously, there's for, further to go. Okay, so let's talk about maybe some series that have specific patterns to them, like there's this thing called an arithmetic series. And it has a very simple pattern. It should be easy for you to identify when you see it. The pattern is that any term of the series plus some number d, where d is a fixed number, it's a constant. It's also called the common difference for the series. Anyway, any term plus d will get you the next term. Okay? I have some formulas uh, such that I can find any term of my choice. I could find the 99th term if I put 99 for n into this formula. What's a sub one mean? That stands for the first term, okay? Uh, and then this is the sum of the first so many terms, okay? So s with a subscript of n, that's how you calculate the sum of terms one through n, terms one through n. It's a shortcut. I guess you could add the terms one at a time if you wanted to, but this is definitely a shortcut to adding a bunch of terms together, starting from the first one and going up to one of your choice, all right? Now, I'll use these formulas here in a minute, but I wanted to tell you what an arithmetic series is and show you some formulas that we may use, all right? Okay, so let's try this. Let's try, uh, here's a series. Calculate the sum of that series, starting with one, okay? So, well, let's see, here's, let me write a little bit of this out. So this series is gonna look like negative two is the first term. When I put one for k, that's what I'll get. And then when I put two for k, remember we're gonna start with k being one, we're gonna count all the way up to 90. When I put two for k, I get zero. And then I'll, I'll put three for k and I'll get two. All right, I'll put the next one. And the next one, I keep going. Uh, and then I realize, well, that's going to be a lot of writing. I'm not going to write all that down. What's the 90th term? Let's say that that's how it starts off, but then, like, I am definitely tired of writing this thing out. Dot, dot, dot. Plus, 90 is going to give you the very last term in this finite series. And that turns out to be 176. Okay? So what's all that add up to? Uh, well, that's a lot of button pushing. I mean, if I was going to do that with a calculator, it was like plus, 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 plus. I didn't even want to write the whole thing down. So let's use our shortcut. Here's how I find the sum of terms 1 through n. Now, first of all, that's for an arithmetic series. Here's what I noticed about this one. One, that is arithmetic. Okay. Does it have the pattern that any term plus some fixed constant will get you the next term. So like negative two plus two is zero, and zero plus two is two, and two plus two is four. I calculated these based on this formula, but then I noticed that once I have them on paper, any term plus two is equal to the next term, all right? So that D number, the common difference is two. And it appears, to add this up, I want the sum of the first 90 terms, okay? Can you agree with that? We start at one, one term, 
two terms, three terms, four terms, five terms. And then how did we get that one? We put 90 in. There's 90 numbers to count as we did this, all right? So that's what I'm after. Now, what was our formula? The sum of terms 1 through 90 is going to be S sub 90, that's our symbol for, equals 90 over 2 times A1 plus A90, okay? So let's put that in. 90 over 2, A1 plus A90. So the sum of the first 90 terms, but the grand total of that can be done this way. All right, well, let's see. I happen to know, and probably you do too, what's 90 over 2? That's 45. And then A with a subscript of 1 means the first term. That's negative 2. Plus, an A with a subscript of 90 means the 90th term. That would be this one. All right? Okay, so that's going to be 176. So that's what we end up with. All right? <clears throat> now, that turns out to be 7,830. Okay, so all of this will add up to 7,830. If you did negative 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 4, if you did all that, all the way to 176, one number at a time, that will be the grand total. Okay, so I thought we would definitely preferably use the shortcut. I, I need you to be aware of that formula. Let's do one that involves a little more thinking, okay? I think this one takes a little more thinking. It says calculate the sum again. What's that going to look like? So we start the counting at 5. If I put 5 in there, I'm going to get 38. So the first term is 38, right? And then the next term is going to be 45. Okay. And then the next term is going to be 52. And it keeps going, right? What's the last number going to be? Well, i got to put 207 in there. So let's see. What's 7 times 207? And then plus 3. Okay, so that's going to be 1452. So that's the very last number. So what's that grand total? That's what we want to know. That's what we're after. Okay. Well, let's see. How many terms are there? I guess that's the tricky part with this one. How many terms are there? Here I thought, because I started at 1, first term, second term, third term, there are 90 terms, okay? But here I'm starting at 5, and, and I'm going to 207. So I need to figure out how many terms are going to be there. Let's take a little bit smaller example. All right? So let's take, like, this one it might be a little bit easier to wrap our minds around. How many terms are in this series? Maybe 3, right? Uh, put 7 in, 7 squared 49. I mean, sorry, 4. 8 squared, 64. So 7, 8, 9, 81, 10, 100. There's four terms. Okay. There's not 10 minus 7 terms. 10 minus 7 is 3. So here's one way you can think about this. Uh, if I have a series... And there's some formula that involves n. And the counting starts at n is equal to number a. And it ends at some other number b. This will have how many terms? b minus a plus 1. Because like with this one, I can tell it has four terms. It's easy to write down. But 10 minus 3, or 10 minus 7 is 3, and I need to add one more. It's got four terms. So in general, that's how it's going to work if your counting doesn't start at 1. That's one way to think about it. That's not the only way to think about it, but it's a way that is easy for me to tell you. So this series right here, there are going to be 207 minus 5 plus 1 terms that I'm trying to add together. All right? So, okay, that's going to be, what, 203 terms. Okay, so 203 terms is from here to there. That's the first term, 
that's term 203 all right so here we go we want s203 all right and according to our formula that's going to be 203 over 2 times first term which is 38 plus last term term 203 which is going to be 1452 okay so that's not hard to do and I already gave you that formula the only part that might catch you a little bit off guard is realizing that there's 203 terms there all right anyway so that number turns out to be uh, 151,235. So the grand total there, all that adding, 151,235. Alright, so that's as far as we'll look at finite series. So in the next video, we'll talk about infinite series, meaning what if that list there went on and on forever okay what would we do okay so then the infinity is going to make it more difficult um oh and i forgot to say this is an arithmetic series right i pointed that out here d is seven right isn't it true 38 plus seven is 45 45 plus seven is 52 i should have pointed that out those formulas i showed you are only for arithmetic series. This right here and this here, those are only for arithmetic series. All right, so that's my fault for not pointing that out to begin with, but this is an arithmetic series just like that one is. You may even notice a pattern to figure out what D is from the very beginning. Anyway, so that's what we have for finite series. The next video, infinite series.